Hello. <laughs> so what do you, you got to tell us? All right, um, it's time to update on the Corolla. Few people know what's uh, happened to it so far. Give us a tour. All right, so first off, it was like running on two cylinders and then, so I pulled the carbs off and I like completely cleaned them out and I swapped out one of the carbs which was buggered um, and just kept playing with that for a while and then eventually it was running pretty well. And so I took it for a few drives and... Um, <laughs> Tried to drive it home. No, well first off, <laughs> First off, I took it for like a couple drives and I was like just around the place here and there. And um, it was like breaking up really badly. And I was like, oh, it must be running lean. And then um, I realized, um, well, I was informed. I was like, might be because it's got like old fuel in it and also it's 91. And then uh, a friend of mine was like, yeah, like you have to run 98 in a small port. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure a combination of it kind of not running so great. It was sort of like on three cylinders at idle, but then it would pick up the fourth later on. I think because the idle, um, the idle jets are like the idle, uh, fuck, I got shit in my ass. The uh, idle like, um, system in one of the carbs in, on cylinder two was blocked up. So I think it wasn't getting um, air. If I pulled the choke out on it, it would pick up that cylinder at idle. But other than that, it wouldn't. And then on full throttle, it would um, get fuel and air and whatever. So, um, yeah, I put 98 in it the next day and I drove it around a bunch, but I think by that point in time, I had detonated it to the point of fucking the rings in it. Um, because I bought a compression tester that day and it read 60 PSI across two of them, then 90 on the third cylinder and 120 on the fourth cylinder. And I was like, well, they're all meant to be 180. So this isn't good. And actually it was just like, maybe my pre pressure test is fucked because um, cylinder two get, kept going between like 60 and 120 PSI. Like sometimes it would read 60, sometimes 120. But I think I was just depending on maybe like how much fuel was in there or like oil getting in there or something like that. Because yeah, when you put oil in the cylinder, it, it raises up the compression. Um, especially if the prison rings are fucked because it creates like a um, temporary seal that's a bit better. Um, so yeah, I had ignored the, um, the pressure tester. I was like, well, screw that, it must be broken, goddamn Autobahn. And um, I drove it around a bunch and it was driving really well. <clears throat> it sounded amazing. The, the throatiness of the carburetors was awesome. And um, it was pulling really hard, it was really fast. And I was like, well, it must be fine. Like, surely it can't have 260 PSI on two cylinders and be able to roast like this. Um, which gives me hope that one day it will be even better than that, which is cool, but... But currently... Yeah, I was driving home to my place uh, over close to the city and uh, it just died. It was done, so... Just gave up. Just, like, didn't want to make power anymore. I took off from the lights and it was like, oh, I can go, please. <laughs> and then, it, yeah, I just pulled yeah. around the corner and it was like, Bleh, dead. And I had to get it towed home. And then we came back and it was 60 PSI across all four. And then, uh, so I did, like, wet and dry compression tests, like, dripping oil into the cylinder. And every single cylinder went up in compression when I dripped the oil in there. Which means that, yeah, it's the piston rings that's doing it and it's not the head. So... Takeaway is, I've learned a lot about carbs since two videos ago where we were like, what's wrong with the carbs? They just needed a clean, um, the, yeah, I just cleaned them out, whatever, got some new fresh gaskets in them, changed some jets over from, because I've got two sets of carburetors now, I kept the second set. Um, the fuel system is all working fine. I think maybe just the carb for cylinder two needs some more cleaning because, yeah, I'll just soak them overnight or whatever and give them a proper rebuild before we get a new engine going in it. But anyway, we'll take a tour of what's going on right now. Now here we have uh, my cams on my roof. Here's some uh, head studs. And over here we have a very sad 4AG with no cams in it. And the head is not on there properly. Oh, it's stuck. It's not on. Anyway, it's just caught on the um, clutch line. Yeah, so that's my sad AGE. Sad reacts only. Yeah. Oops. So, <clears> I mean, <throat> the good thing about this is I didn't blow a rod out the side of the block or anything, so um, it is still a 
seven rib small port that uh, I think I will rebuild, unless I'm really strapped for cash. I'll keep this one, buy another one that's like okay, whether it be a big port or a small port, just something to put in there so I can fucking drive this car. <laughs> I'm so sick of not it driving it. It'll never happen there. Never gonna happen. Yeah. Um, and then I'll rebuild this slowly. Um, and maybe do like, bore it a little bit oversized and try and make it pretty bullet bulletproof though. Um, I just want it to be basically standard, um, just with, yeah. I don't need big numbers out of it. just want it to be reliable, basically. <laughs> You're trying to make a car normal. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but the um, good thing was, ow, that fucking hurt. The distributor did great. Ignition was like so powerful. Actually, because I would like test whether um, cylinders were firing or not, I'd pull out an ignition lead and then it would just zap, like it would arc like crazy. It's like the voltage was super high. The ignition coil must be fucking baller because like I would get electrocuted all the fucking time <laughs> by it. I was like, ugh. Um, so the dizzy was good. Dizzy's good. Ignition's all sweet. Uh, the alternator was charging. Um, so all my wiring's good, which is a fucking wonder to me because I've always been terrified and terrible at wiring. But um, it seemed to go all right. Do you want to explain what happened to the dizzy? Oh, yeah, actually, my stupid... Okay, this battery harness mm -hmm. um, was in here the whole... Like, I that's how I bought it. That was roadworthy like that. Not in my hands, apparently. Nice. Um, and I just never bothered to replace it. But So I was driving around to Matt's place um, with it like that, and then it fell, the battery fell into my brand new distributor and just melted a fucking hole in it. Bad boy memes. That's why I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to get it in the light. Yeah. It yeah. melted a hole in it and <clears throat> scorched my scorcher. Scorched the scorcher. <laughs> Went and scorched it. Totally scorched, bro. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, fuel system was good as well. I think I maybe don't need that return. Um, which I'll, I'll probably take that out and put the gauge over where it was before on this side of the um, uh, thing because it's getting all scuffed up by the carburetors. Um, yeah, temperature was good. What can I say? It ran except it had everything but compression. So there you go. The like most important part. Yeah. I'm actually really stoked on the wiring for this. I mean, it. this, um, I'm going to clean this up eventually and I'm going to run new like everywhere that there's a spliced in wire eventually i'll run that straight i'll take it out of i'll i'll uh tweeze out the plug i'll go straight from the plug to uh like with a new cable eventually mm -hmm. with all those ones that have been spliced in like this into this um uh <clears throat> yeah whatever and yeah. i'll hide the um relays um and i'll probably have like a little relay box where i'll do my two-step um inside the car maybe also yeah. the other thing i was really stoked on is um i'd never aligned a clutch before and i did i aligned this clutch with a socket extension and it lined up fine and also my um uh braided clutch line works great clutch feels really awesome super strong it's just sad it's just, <laughs> it's just, sad. just, it's just sad it's just sad uh Everybody was right. I shouldn't have worn that bad luck club hoodie when we're here. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, also today. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, what's the plan for today? The t plan for, the, for today is that, is to put the engine back together. I'll put the cams back in, put the time belt back on, uh, bolt the head on. And um, also, I've got this. Oh, yeah, this guy. Cube short shifter. Um, I guess I'm a sucker for advertising and I watch Monkey London, so I decided to get this bad boy. Um, and yeah, so it's just like a cool little short shifter for the T50. And what I'm gonna do. What's that funky little notch in it? What? Yeah, what's that? Uh, I'm not sure. It's like that on the stock one. Oh, that's weird. Right. But what I'm gonna do with this <clears throat> is. Um, so like it'll be shorter action with uh, with uh, this on it, which is like the stock length. But what I want to do is uh, get an extension, like just straight uh, stainless steel or something like that extension on it that's like that long, and then like my shifter on there, 
so it'll be like super tall so it'll be basically like the same throw just like right next to the steering wheel i think that'd be cool that'd yeah. be super race car like one of the, the sweet chica trucks yeah true except like super short throw actually um it'll be like one of the n2 race cars so there you go i might get a trd ship so sweet but you don't know you have, no i don't and you have sweet chica style gear stick anyway already yeah yeah, well, I want to get a TRD shift knob and um, have them interchangeable. Anyway, is that what they could? That's my little my little cat knob. Your little <laughs> <laughs> this little Neko knob. I'm gonna go Neko myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, <laughs> on a lighter note, <laughs> it'll be like straight out of the boot. You won't be able to see where um the uh, extension goes to where the extension changes over and then that'll be like super high up like right next to the steering wheel so you'd be like that and then you would be like bah, like like this is on the steering wheel and then that's the shifter bah, 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 like that nice it'd be sick it'd be like an n2 race car and then i'll be a sick car do we so still don't, don't wear that don't wear that hoodie anymore yeah oh i got an even cooler one Dylan's a Japanese hot rodder. It's true. I do like hot rods. Anyway. He's hot and he has a rod. Fucking meow. Fucking meow. Yeah. <sighs> oh, I feel safe walking backwards. Yeah, there's so much shit in here. I gotta clean up in here as well. I think I might do a little bit of that today. Oh, you nice head. Thanks. <laughs> Actually, you know what I've been meaning to say on camera? What? Is, the thing that people don't realise about engine swaps and stuff like that, and doing big jobs on cars, is there is so much money, especially in Australia where tools and stuff are quite expensive. Yep. Like in America, um, like I remember watching Chris Rudnick go and like, probably buy like a thousand dollars worth of tools for like less than 500 bucks. Like, here it costs us like a thousand bucks. Even if it's um, cheap shit. Yeah, even if it's cheap shit. But yeah, there's so much money in doing an engine swap and having to buy tools. Like, to take the head off, I had to buy these, a whole set, um, which was like 40 bucks. And that was like just one of three trips that I'd done that week to just buy like one thing that cost me, you know, that one trip costs like over a hundred dollars. Yeah. It's, that's so much money in like just little bits. Like, you know, engine oil, you've got to spend 40 bucks on a, you know, a five well, litre thing of that. And then, this is Australia, everything's ridiculously expensive. Yeah, especially in Melbourne. But yeah, when, uh, when you like, <laughs> it's like, it's like why it's so ridiculous that um, TJ Hunt did that video on how much it's going to cost him to swap his engine in his um, 350Z. It's like, there is always going to be something you've forgotten. Yeah. And there's always going to be something you've just got to run down to the shop and pick up. And that's always going to be much more expensive than you think. And there's always different accessibility issues. Unless you're smart as fuck. No. You know what I just realised? Unless, unless you're rich as fuck. I had this at Top Dead Centre when I took and when I took the head off, and then I turned it. <clears throat> I have to put it back at Top Dead Centre. But yeah, it's just there are so many costs that you'll never expect. Yeah. Five sure. Unless you've done it like a hundred times, then you'll expect every cost. Yeah, unless you smart. it. Mm, grime. I've always loved grime. I can't wait to just not engine swap my car. Right? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> How many cases is this engine? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. Nice. Too many. Oh, sorry, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Does he watch? I broke your engine. Yeah, he watches. He watches? Yeah. Dear Jeff. Jeff. Dylan is sorry. Actually, we were talking about it the other day. I'm like, yeah, I think I might have fucked it, man. <laughs> He's like, no. The previous owner of this engine, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dylan took his dreams and threw them on the ground. Hey, he took his dreams and crashed them into a guardrail. So there you go. 
Sorry, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how rip is that to Jules? What? Julian. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. True. Um... Uh, Should we put up a photo? Yeah, put up a pic of Jules. Um, if pic here, here, here. Yeah. old subscribers <laughs> will know Jules <clears throat> is a 180 SX and an S13, and his 180 just got T-boned at the track and is ripper, full ripper. Oh, it is so ripper. He's alright though. It looked like he'd have felt a bit of it. Did he have? Does he? Ha do you know if he has side and side intrusions? Yeah, he's got side intrusions. Yeah. Okay. He that's said good. that's what saved him, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, because really if you want, see the photo, it's like fucking... You don't want the front corner of another car going right to Right in there, yeah. Head gasket. Fancy head gasket. Seems like a waste putting in a fresh head gasket for an engine that's probably not going to run. Well, right, you're going to... Wait, so you're going to change head gasket and then run it? I don't know. Hello, Matto. Hello, friends. Ooh, how did you know I was here? I didn't tell you. Yeah, you fucking dick. Me, cheeky, <laughs> message me when you're here. Yeah. Well, I forgot, okay? You did? Yeah, well, I just figured you were here. Dude, look at my fancy head gasket. Ooh. Ooh. Dude, you know what I learnt about, um, uh, about these and why that's like that? Why that's copper? Uh, no, why? Um, because in situations where, um... There's high heat. Yeah, where there's high heat and, mm. um, silicon or rubber or whatever would, um, melt, um, copper is malleable enough to, um, crush and create a seal. That's cool guys. Yeah. Called crush washers. Yeah. That's awesome. Use them on um Thanks. That's sick. Man, that's so cool. Explain you yourself. Explain. do you wanna explain yourself, mate? Um I'm gonna put in my short shifter, hopefully. That's cute. First now I've got the interior out of here. And <laughs> true. Break my tape player, I break you. I actually nah. love listening to tapes so much. I got an Elvis tape for when the car was working again. Yeah, and it's got um it's got like all his original, like all his early um hits, like blue suede shoes and I've honestly I've never like actually Hound Dog, to Jailhouse Rock. Really? I don't know, like I have, but it's not my thing. <laughs> it's so good man. Dude, old rock and roll when you're driving Oh wait, you drive a Sylvia now. Fuck. <laughs> hey. Hey. Are you saying that Sylvia's can't be old rock and roll? Yeah. Well, you're I'm wrong. I'm telling you that you can't wear Moon Eyes shit. And what? Well, neither can but, you. <laughs> yeah, I can, because mine's old. This is an Australian domestic old. market Corolla. as fuck. Yeah, but that's the thing about Moon Eyes. It's all encompassing. So then See, mine is us. Mine's <laughs> all encompassing, but you guys are not allowed. old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you don't have a tape player, therefore you can't. You're not allowed to listen to rock and roll. Yeah, I would hate to have a decent speaker system in my car. Yeah, me too. And a touchscreen that plays movies. <laughs> I have two tape players. Admit, it's awesome. In my other S13. It's awesome in a way that is totally different to why my car is awesome. Yes, yes. But you can't watch Initial D when you do skids. Did you just say the word chat? Oh, sorry. People at work say Don't say it ever again. I know, it's a pretty chat thing to say. It's just such like a... Well, we can say. A try hard lad can we say. Try hard lad. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought lad. Yeah, I would have thought like Some 15 year old British wanker. <laughs> Dude, I just think like high school girls. That's the chat. <laughs> and then we've also got a girl in the car. Whoa, what are you doing, doing, man? Dylan's looking at instructions. I'm not right. Are you going to do something correctly, Dylan? Because I don't think I'm prepared for this. Probably not. Oh, you can't yet. Dude, should I do the ultimate YouTuber thing and make her. Um, YouTube tutorial on how to do something I'm currently learning how to do. Yeah. <laughs> so first and, off, and end you of do this. <laughs> <laughs> then at the end of the tutorial, you give a slightly different tutorial on how you do the tutorial wrong. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, well... Dude, that's I the ultimate TJ that. Hunt thing to do. <laughs> Look at that! Oh, yuck, dude. Dude, that's tasty. Dude, I'm so glad I'm doing this now. That's... That's charred, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 what was that? Who are you? Dude, are we gonna get a whole new generation of people saying that that's chat? That's chat. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's so chat. You're not fam anymore. What do you mean I'm not fam anymore? Your moves are weak. I have a shout out I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, if you want to see somebody putting a V8 UZ, no, yeah, 
Um, one UZ. UZ. Yeah. So I was about to say UZ70 into a KE70. If you want to see one UZ into a KE70, go check out a channel, uh, they're called Lighten Up. And they're on YouTube. Some dude. Been talking to a couple of the guys from that. And they're... The guy, the guy who's doing it, his mm. name's Kevin. He's um, putting uh, yeah, one UZ into a K70. He reckons he's only put like five grand into it so far. And I'm like, well, fuck me, a 10 grand car that doesn't work, has a 4AG, will make less than 100 kilowatts. Yeah. Anyway, um, he's got a mate who's got a fucking, he's building, like internally building a one UZ wow. and putting a single turbo on it and wanting to make 800 wheel horsepower. But it's currently single, uh, single turbo and making 400 wheel horsepower on stock internals. In a K70. In a K. Yeah, I was like, uh, so, so that's, like, that's like already 800 do you want to die? I was like, so does it get any traction? He's like, oh, yeah, it grips up a bit in fifth. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> what the fuck? Hilarious. Just trying to overtake someone and you just. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out the windscreen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy. Dude, imagine in the rain. You just wouldn't even be able to get on it at all. Because, like, yeah, even in the low RPM, you'd just be... What rear end do you put in that? Borgie, mate. <laughs> Standard borgie. <laughs> just first start up with the one you just... First gear, bang, axles just... <laughs> I suppose that's when you start... Straight out. I suppose that's when you start going, like... Just bounces off of the back and just leaves the axles behind. Full hot rod, you probably don't even pay attention to Toyota Diffs anymore. <coughs> Well, I, even on something I didn't know about, um, Adam Ozzy is doing a... Oh, what transmissions are you doing for his 2J? It's out of a um, 370. V160. Or is it a 350? I think it's a V... No, no, it's... No, that's the <coughs> that's the Supra gearbox he's not running on. Oh. He's running a gearbox out two? of the... No, he's running a gearbox out of the 350Z with an adapter yeah. plate. It starts and with it's, he said it's they're just, like, so it, cheap. Isn't that a Z32? No, Z32's a car. Oh, oh, sorry. What? Z32 is a 300 ZF. Yeah. Yeah, so then I'm thinking Z33. Z33. Oh, yeah. you mean the chassis code for the actual. Oh, that's yeah, not the three, gearbox. 350Z is yeah. a Z33. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay. But yeah, it's either, <coughs> I don't know if it's 350 or 370, but I thought that was okay. cool because he was like, they're super strong and super cheap. Yeah, because they come so in a lot of cars too. Yeah. They come in the G35s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he was like, Nicole had an R154 in her car. Yeah. And they were like, I don't know why we did that. Well, because it came with the engine. Yeah, he was like, that's the only reason, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. What's the problem with the gearbox then? The R154? Yeah. They cost way too much, and yeah. they're not strong at all. Oh! Yeah. They're okay. strong, aren't they? They're not that strong. Apparently they're nowhere near as strong as the um, Z gearboxes. Oh. Well, that's like what well, people oh, say. That's what, that was it's it's sort of like given, what people say about the, the S13's R1E. People are just like, yeah, it's the weakest, weakest diff ever. Yeah, but if you've got it, a 100 it, kilowatt it, DE. Well, no, it's actually not the weakest diff ever if you weld it or like change the center. Because the centre in it being open diff is only two spider gears, and LSD or anything else is four. Sure. Oh. So you cleaned it up? Yeah, I cleaned it up. It's a lot nicer now. And now I'm installing this hardware here. The goodies. The goodies. And I've got to do this weird process for, like, putting this in. And once it goes under, it should pull around. Hey, you got him. Nice. Thoroughly the grease inside of the ship. Okay. That's pretty fucking thorough. Oh, they said thorough. <laughs> said thoroughly. Oh, look, it's so blue. Did they say drown? Oh, look, it's so blue. I couldn't tell when. <laughs> you Dylan, you idiot. You idiot. Engines. You're just so chat, Dylan. It's <laughs> chat. Um. Install the. I need to... Wait, what? How well is the tutorial going now? Install the spring... Uh, a solid 2 out of 10. Yeah, but we're, we're teaching by learning. Yeah, we are, that's the best way to learn slash teach slash learn. fuck everyone else up. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there you go. Is that a clip? Cup cup it's, like, it's the same on this. Retainer cup and also ball. And also Dylan. And also tutorial. And also learn. <laughs> Learning. Very learned right now. So learned. Leonard. Leonard Cohen. Whom? 
or should I say whom? That doesn't feel cool. <laughs> Give it. Metal cup and the retainer cup, then reinstall the circlip from your factory shift by making sure it locates properly into the groove on the shifter housing. What do you mean, man? That'd feel sick. Where does this like, guy just, go? Yeah. When you oh, that was... I put the white thing in place of that. When you put all oh. the other clips on the... Alright, let's, um, let's chug her in the car, hey? Ugh. I reckon that'll film it, I think. <laughs> oh, that old, that old <laughs> chestnut. So first you put on the sands to your adapter plate. And then you put in your, and then you put in this one. I should probably take it out of gear. <laughs> Fuck you. Now it's not alone. No. Can you get that voice again? It's so good. <laughs> and then you put on your shifter housing. <laughs> it's gonna be a tight fit. I should probably put um, uh, gasket goo on it. Why? Um, because it says to. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'll was just a gasket on the old one, so. You're a gasket on your old one. You should have said that earlier in the tutorial, Dylan. And then you get your gasket, Gil. Dude, you were Australian before. Oh, was I? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, American's funny. Now I've gone Canadian. That yeah, this is the stankiest gasket go I've ever seen <laughs> in oh. my life. Yeah, it smells like salt and vinegar or something. Yeah, it smells like salt and regular vinegar. vinegar. Doyle rules. <laughs> oh, Doyle rules. Oh, no, that's Did you just say taste? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. You are actually retarded. Like, I can't believe. I mean, it's 2017, I'm allowed to be retarded. <laughs> it's 2017. <laughs> Can't say that man, it's 2017. I don't know how to use that word. Sorry guys. Can't upload videos on YouTube, it's 2017. I get paid by AdSense, it's 2017. Actually though. <laughs> what, did you just say 17 cents? <laughs> that sounds accurate. <laughs> if only they had that kind of money to spare. <laughs> what? He has, like a beauty, he has a beauty mole gasket. Look at what it's like. <laughs> do, do, are you a jazz singer? What you moved is everything. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, the cucks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say that? Fuck. He meant it too. <clears throat> so basically, this is just a spacer, and it and the the like bottom section of the shifter is longer. It just changes and that's the what pivoting changes point. The throw. Okay. Yeah, because I've always been like I've never really researched how they work. It Quite just changes the pivot point. Mm. That's cool. Science and stuff. Depending on the car and, and the short shifter though, it can fuck your synchros. Okay. Well, not, not fuck them, but like wear them faster. Oh, okay. Because you're shifting too you fast. Shift too, yeah. Yeah. Because you shift faster than is like factory able for the gearbox. Okay, I don't think I would ever buy a short shifter to shift faster. This has the same problem as the T3 short shifter in that that's where first used to be and that's where fifth is. No, it leans over to the left but that's cool, that's fine. Wait, what do you mean? Well, um, <coughs> this will be for American gearboxes. Oh, okay. See, it um, angles towards you oh, instead of angling bit. towards me. Well, that would, although for a Corolla though, that would kind of make it normal. Yeah, check us. Because Corolla. Well, I'm still gonna, I'm gonna get the shifter extension and I can probably just bend that into the right shape because this will be underneath where the um, boot goes. So I can just like bend it in the right direction. Oh, you? Oh, You're yeah. sick. It actually feels pretty good. Yeah? You just feel. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, who knows? Yeah, I suppose it's like the same gearbox, right? And they're pretty good feeling gearboxes, so... Nice chat. That's chat. <laughs>
foot brake, uh, what is it? Uh, side brake. <laughs> wait, oh, wait, I can do this. I've been to things, I got that much. <laughs> Hello, officer. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be like. Hello, sir. <laughs> All right. That's that for the day. Um, what is that? Oh, is that your comp tester? Zero psi. That's all of his cylinders right now. Yeah. Actually, currently, yeah. Yeah, because no head. head's not on. Um. So that is all. That's the current uh, mood on the 4AG. I need another one. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, basically... <coughs> sh stop that, okay? Can you not? Like, we're filming here. It's a professional environment. I fucking had to. Get shit together, man. This is running out of battery. It's professional. You're wasting okay. this time. <laughs> well, um, thank you for watching, uh, again. Uh, Enjoy it. I know it's been... Uh, we should really have it driving by now. But I'm a big idiot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So stay tuned to watch me uh, hopelessly work on this car for probably another six months. Maybe drive it in the summer. And I'll make sure that uh, we film it and you guys are kept up to date on it. Yeah. Also, when it gets to summer, we've got to make sure we don't run it with any water and no fans, okay? Yeah. Agreed. That's the plan. I'm just going to take the radiator out. Radiator lead. Just let it naturally fall out. Weight, weight, uh, weight reduction. I'm going to pull it in with zip ties again. <laughs> again. But like over my head. And then when it falls out, it just knocks me out and then I'll die. And you're going to be the cub. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that's that for the day. We'll see you next time with more updates on this. On it not working. On it not Nah, on I'm going to buy another engine and then I'll put it in and that'll be actually be piss easy. And then if it's a good engine, it'll just be yeah. like, ba -ba bang. And then it'll work. And you've got all the parts already, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I have everything to make it run. So there you go. Sweet. Bless up.